listen niece and nephew. Dating is like job interview. You always have to lie to get the job. So you see woman, you see man, you go on date, hide your crazy. Don't show them your crazy on first date. Show them your crazy on the fifth year. Hide your crazy for five years, then they stuck with you. Hello and welcome back to the Haya Podcast. Uh, it's me again, it's Nigel Lung. And uh, I have a producer here, Matt, who's always here, always here, always on time, which I appreciate. It's a very rare quality for a British person to be on time. We have established that. <laughs> I've worked with builders and they're, they're never on time, but you're on time. Yeah, this is the only thing I'm on time for, actually. I'm normally late. Really? Yeah, for a lot of things. What, what, what makes this different? Uh, I don't know. Like, I think because it's quite far away from where I live, uh -huh. I can't afford to be... If it's somewhere really close to me, I'll be like 10 minutes late. Really? But oh, because you, away, you underestimate how long it takes for yeah, you to exactly. move shit. And, and also, it's like margin of error could be so huge. If I leave it 10 minutes late, it could end up being 30 minutes because of the tube or whatever. Ah, uh, so. yes. The tube sucks now. These days, I don't know why. They, they keep going on strike. That's what happens if you live in a calmy society. Yeah, in America, sure, there's a lot of income inequality and stuff, but people actually want to want to work, you know? No, no that's, that's not even true. I would say in Asia, people actually want to work because the government doesn't help you. If you don't have a job, you starve. Here, it is, it's too comfortable. It's too comfortable nobody wants to work. They go on strike despite making 80K a year. They go on strike because of the hours, the night tube. Yeah, there's a big thing in London, right? People are going on strike. Just tube drivers are going on strike because... They're working too many hours. They have to work one night tube shift a month and they go on strike. It's too many human rights, man. Too many strikes. I play football with someone uh -huh. who is a tube driver. Maybe really? I should bring him on and you can interrogate him. Yeah, he has time to play football. <laughs> if you have time for hobbies, you have too much time, okay? We're supposed to just work and take care of our families. That's all we are put on earth to do. No hobbies. <laughs> If you have hobbies, you have too much time. You you shouldn't be you shouldn't be able to have a hobby and go on strike. But yeah, people here uh, don't want to work. But uh, Matt 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 is okay. Matt is okay. G good work ethic. You know, you're one of the good ones. You're like the hardest working white person I know. You know, oh. and that's not saying much, guys. <laughs> that's not saying much. The bar is very low. I'll still take that. I'm yeah, really take happy that. With that. Take that, but if you if you ever move to Asia, you'll be the la the laziest one there. You know that's gonna be my new Twitter bio. Really? Uh, yeah, one hundred percent. The hardest working white person that Nigel Ung knows. Okay. That's it. <laughs> Seal of approval. Yes. I I work hard, but I'm the laziest Asian. If I'm in Asia, I'm like below average in terms of work ethic. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I don't really, you know, I I actually get seven or eight hours sleep a night. That is that is too much sleep for an Asian person. But in other news, the tour started. Tour started in earnest. So I went to, where was I? Cardiff, Manchester, Liverpool, and Leeds last week. Thank you so much if you came out. Wonderful shows. Uh, Leeds, in particular, surprised me because it's my London prejudice. And I've been to Leeds before, but it's just take the train to Leeds, perform at the gig, take the train back to London. And Leeds surprised me because I didn't know I didn't know it was that nice. I didn't know there were so many Asians in Leeds. There's a big Thai community in Leeds. And I didn't know it was so nice. The theater was the, the, the most beautiful theater out of the whole week. It's like Victorian era and classy. And it's basically, it made me envious. You know, I was like, oh, I'm going to pick up some ideas for my house. Uh, and then there's so many Asian people. There's so many like Asian shops in there. And I had this London prejudice because, you know, when you talk about the North, in, in the UK, the reputation is, oh, Maggie Thatcher fucked it up. You know, oh, <laughs> Maggie T fucked it up. It's just a bunch of like unemployed ex-co-workers down in the dumps and just struggling to make it. And then you go to Leeds, there's a skyline. There's like nice tall buildings there. I was like, wow, <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. I was expecting a post-industrial, all the jobs has le have left for Asia, you know, and these like working class white people who are proud coal miners have are out of jobs and all like, you just imagine this like coal miner family, you know, with dirty faces from the coal. <laughs> Isn't that what it's like you, people here make it out to be? The stereotype of the North. But I went to Leeds and there's actually like nice things there. They had a Jolly Bee in Leeds. It's a Filipino fast food chain. There's only one in London. 
uh, in Earl's near Earl's Court, like fried chicken. They do fried chicken and spaghetti and burgers. I know, very disparate, <laughs> very disparate food items. They have a Jolly Bean Leeds. It's crazy, and I just thought it was gonna be like a like a sad some okay some some towns in England are sad. You know, like it's very like just pound shops and all the shops are closed and weeds are growing out of the shops. You know, but Leeds was nice and surprising and wonderful crowds. They all gave me gifts. Every show, somebody gave me a gift. I have, I have, I have them here with me. Let's talk about it on this episode, you know, That's so key. people know what tour life is like. You know, it's not just 10 hookers in the green room <laughs> as, we, as we've established last episode. Before you do that, Nigel, mm -hmm. you say you're saying how beautiful the Leeds theatre was. Well, yeah. when I was going through comments and things to talk about, okay. do you feel bad about going into that beautiful a theatre and then doing like anal jokes like bringing the tone down no <laughs> because this woman wrote in saying like love the show and everything my son haven't seen him laugh so much in years next time less anal jokes please what <laughs> I have one anal joke woman is that too much anal for you have you done anal I think you need to do a bit of anal yourself <laughs> and then you'll realise the joys then it will be because she probably hasn't done anal in a while so when I do anal jokes to you, it feels like, ugh, why is he talking about this? Ugh. But if you've done anal recently, ma'am, then those <laughs> jokes will be like observational humor, relatable. But it's probably not nice for her having to like laugh along at anal jokes with her son next to her. <laughs> well, your son's going to do anal someday, I hope. Do you want your son to experience joy? So you should want your son to experience anal ASAP, <laughs> you know, as soon as anally possible. <laughs> How old's the son, did you say? I saw a photo and looked like, I reckon, 13, 14. Oh, he knows what anal is. He's probably experimented. <laughs> He's probably put a finger up his own ass. Oh, my God. We all have those thoughts at that age, right? Right? I never put a finger up my ass. You never but... put a finger up your ass? <laughs> Still, up till this day? Well, no. Have no. you had any fingers up your ass? I am not making myself this vulnerable. What? <laughs> Okay, well, you're missing out. I'll, I have you. We, of course. What, your own finger? Uh, have I done my own finger? Not sexually, just cleaning wise. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you have to clean your ass with your own fingers up there. I don't do it because, I don't do it myself because it's more fun when someone else does it for you. It's more like a surprise. You're like, whoa. <laughs> but uh, the shows are marketed as, as 14 plus and uh, the, the 14 year olds like it. What can I say? Oh my God. You know, and it, it is a beautiful theater. I only talk about anal in beautiful theaters. If you talk about anal in the grubby venue, then it's just gross. Yeah, yeah. But if you talk about anal in the beautiful Victorian era theater, then it's just it's just classy, classy anal talk. I, I wonder who she is because there was one I, there was one uh, audience member who was a mom. She brought her son around that age. Like she was like the, the hottest person in that room, and she's a mom. And I was like, whoa. Where's the dad? Is the dad around? Because can I be the dad? Wouldn't it be weird if you brought your mom to a show <laughs> and a few weeks later, I show up at the family dinner? Hey, so kid, um, remember Uncle Roger? Yeah, he's coming <laughs> over for dinner tonight. You know, since we go went to the show, we kept in touch. You know, <laughs> can you imagine? Bring your mom to a show and then... <laughs> and Uncle Roger's your dad now. You know, Uncle Roger's your mom's daddy and oh. your dad. Yeah, bring, you bring your mom to see Uncle Roger and then suddenly it's Daddy Roger in your <laughs> life. And then you hear all that pounding in the next room. Uh, but she was, she was very stunning. And I, I was half tempted to say, where's the dad? Maybe she's like the, tro the new trophy wife. You know, the dad and the, and the, the mom split up. And now the dad has this trophy wife who, and the dad's too busy working. So she, the dad just gets the hot mom to bring the kid everywhere. I like how much thought you put into it. I've been thinking about <laughs> her, yeah. Some long car journeys. <laughs> Listen, as a single guy, you just look for love in whatever place you can find love, you know. And sometimes that's at a comedy show where we talk about anal. Where else can you find love? On the apps? Ugh, gross. I hate the apps. It makes women feel very disposable. Just swipe, 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 swipe. I love meeting my fans' moms. That's my, th that's my type now. <laughs> my fans' moms. <laughs> All right, enough of that talk. I want to share some gifts that listeners have sent me. So, of course, I, I get some food. Uh, this one, somebody sent me some sambal. 
oh. some Indonesian chili paste. And this this is pungent, you know, it has shrimp paste in there, Matt, which is like white people's kryptonite. Shrimp, <laughs> <laughs> shrimp paste, pe white people fear it, man. But uh, thank you so much. I forget where I got this, which show I got this from now, but I'm really gonna put this in my food. So are, thank are you. Gonna, you. Are you gonna cook with that? Of course. You don't think that you need to give that to somebody else who might want to cook with it? I am gonna cook with it. What are you, what are you trying to say? <laughs> I'm trying, trying to say, to can say? I have it? <laughs> I don't know where to buy these things from. The Chinese grocery store. Where are they? Chinatown. Okay. Yeah, your yeah, favorite yeah. place. It's my favorite place. Yeah, all the Asian women there. Just, just don't tell Gemma. That's <laughs> <laughs> hey, honey, off to get some groceries. Don't tell her where. She thinks we're going to Tesco. We are going to Yellow Fever Central, you know? Go to TSQ, the club I go to sometimes, because you'll be like the only... Uh, there are always a couple of white guys there who are into Asian women. <laughs> and they always show up alone. Oh, on their own. Not even with other white guys. Yeah, sometimes with one other white oh, guy. That's so but cringy. that doesn't really make it better. That's the wingman. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm so glad if I date a white woman, is there's nothing fetishy about it. White guys, white guys have it tough, man. With all this talk of white privilege, let's talk about white problems. I know Asian guys who only date white women. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody says you have a white fetish. Somebody gave me this. This will be useful for my back problems. Uh, this is like a little, you know, it's like Tiger Bomb. This is so cute. But it's like, let, let's see, let's open it. Mmm, I smell like my grandma. Seriously, when I open this and I smell it, it brought back memories of my grandma. You know, because when my grandma grew up, there wasn't diptyque. Uh, so this smells like a little bit powdery, a bit old Asian woman. Is that you know? something you put in the bath? No no, like no, 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 no. This is like something you put on your back if it's sore. Oh, okay. You know? So it's perfect, perfect. So thank you. This I think remember, I remember this girl who gave it to me. She uh, uh, Her name is Mulan. Uh, because she, she introduced herself by saying her name is Mulan but not like in the movie. And then she gave me this and she was very nice. She drew some fan art for me on Instagram. Oh, cool. So Mulan, look at me. I'm using your little gift on my on my sore shoulder. I would ask Matt to do it, but then it's a bit weird to do that on camera. Oh, mm. you sure you don't want to help no, lather you're this? You're good. Are you sure you don't want to help lather this on my body, <laughs> Matt? <laughs> this podcast is becoming OnlyFans really quickly. <laughs> It's actually yeah, helping. It I'm so glad I strained my shoulders now. Thank you, Mulan. Somebody gave me a little, nice little, uh, look at this. Oh, that's so A cute. drawing of me holding an MSG packet. I love the blusher. Yeah, that's I really love sweet. the blush, but you make me look fat. You make me look fat in this Rosie Chen art. Thank you, Rosie Chen. Uh, follow her at Rosie Chen art. And most importantly, the worst gift I got, somebody in the front row during the show, during the show too, not even uh, during the meet and greet. He just handed me this Jamie Oliver cookbook. <laughs> Jamie Oliver together. How many cookbooks are we gonna give this guy, you know? If you come to my show, you wanna give me a gift, feel free. I think if you give me like a rice cooker, it'd be hard to transport back. Uh, but small things are always welcome. And I wanna, I wanna collect all of them in a box in my house and then let's look at it and have the memories. And I also wanna, I'm thinking of going on stage, bringing a big bag of MSG and just sprinkle it on people, you know? You know how strippers like throw money at people? But aren't some people like, allergic to MSG? Are You're people allergic to MSG? Yeah, my mum is. Really? If she was sat in the front row, she was, yeah. Oh, I don't have to worry about this. <laughs> That'd be so funny though. What what happens to your mom? Seizures? Uh, no, no. What happens to her? She gets the shits. Yeah, they're fine. <laughs> the theaters have cleaners. Enjoy the show, laugh yourself, shit your pants. <laughs> Fine, fine. I'm thinking of coming out like that, you know, the MSG, like Salt Bay, but <laughs> MSG Bay. Foo, foo. So there was an interesting article mm -hmm. that uh, you sent me in the yes, week. Yes, yes. Listeners, when I find something that I think is interesting enough to talk about on the podcast, I just message it, I just WhatsApp it to Matt yep. at all hours of the day. Yeah, to a um, Wall Street Journal. Yeah. Here's why I'll be keeping my shoes on in your shoeless home. Yeah, that, that just made me like, made my blood boil. And it made, a, I'm sure it made a lot of Asian people's blood boil too, because we take our shoes off in the house. And then this guy or woman, who, uh, who wrote it? It's a woman, it's Chris Freiswick. 
Chris Fryswick. Public enemy number one for Asian people. Chris Fryswick. But before you go in on her too hard, it's worth saying that she does say if you have any religious beliefs or cultural things, why you shouldn't should take your shoes off, then she will do it. But if it's just a personal preference, then no, she will not be taking her shoes off. Yeah, she says that if it was covered in muck or something like that, then she would take them off. But if it's just like, you know, normal wear and tear of the day, then why should she take them off? Because it's always covered in muck. You just can't see the muck sometimes. But you could argue... bacteria and viruses and shit. Well, that might be on your floors already. And by keeping her shoes on, Uh maybe she's protecting herself from your floor. My floor is cleaner than your fucking shoe. How would you know that? Because I clean it (laughs) and I don't wear shoes in it. Because outside is always dirtier than inside. (laughs) You don't need to be a genius to figure that out. Outside is dirty. Outside is where the shit is. And the piss and the dog poo and and, and cars and trains and smog and smoke and, and, and rats. Are you that kind of guy? No, I do take shoes off. Yeah, Good. But I'm too, like, British where I, I worry so much about offending people. People can probably tell by the way I cringe at some of, like, what some people would consider not offensive things you say, but I'm there, like, Ugh. Yeah, you're, you're, you're offended. Not offended, but you, you cringe at offended. all the pedo stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, newsflash, pedos are all around you. Well, AKA Prince Andrew. Everyone will be looking forward to. We have some follow up on pedophilia later, but yes, we'll save we're, we're getting later. there. We, we, we don't want to get demonetized, so we a don't sentence. want to talk about pedophilia too quickly. I never thought I would say that sentence. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up next <laughs> pedophilia. Nigel's favorite topic. Listen, your tax money goes to support pedophilia because you are paying for Prince Andrew's uh, settlement. 12 million is taxpayers' money. He might have his own money from somewhere. Um, it all comes from <laughs> us, the people. If you don't know the story, listeners, Pins Andrew settled out of court with uh, Virginia, Virginia something. So good on, good on you, Virginia. Good job. Get the bag and run. You know, some people get molested and they start a charity or a foundation. Ugh, stupid. <laughs> Virginia got like sexually assaulted, allegedly. And then she just got 12 million. That's the way you should do it. Some people come out and become activists. I'm like, listen, don't try to be a hero. Just take the money. That's what I would do. This thing, bad thing happened to me as a kid. Now I'm going to try to stop this bad thing happening to other kids. Ah, oh, boring. This bad thing happened to me as a kid and now I got 12 million. Way better story. You invite people to your yacht and people go, how'd you get this yacht? Well, child abuse. Yeah, somebody touched me 20 years ago and now I have this yacht. <laughs> If I got t- if I got m- touched and then I got 12 million from someone and then I bought a yacht, I'll frame a photo of that sexually sexual uh, abuser and put it on my yacht and be like, thank oh you. My. Thank you. I wake up every day looking, looking at him or her. Thank you. Thank you, this person. So what you're thank saying you is yacht. only get sexually assaulted or victim of child abuse if they're rich is what you're saying. I mean... Try, yeah. Try. <laughs> try, try. I know sometimes you get touched by someone who's broke and you're like, fuck. <laughs> a po- sometimes a poor person sexually assaults you and you're like, now what am I going to do? All this trauma. And I can't even like get anything from it. You know, like poor people touch kids too. That is the main, that is the, tra- the, the biggest tragedy of the world. When poor people touch children, it fucks them up and they can't bring him to court. He's not going to be able to pay anything. He can't even like afford a lawyer. He just goes to jail. Yeah. So if you get touched, you better hope they're rich. You know what I mean? <laughs> what What's the alternative? You want to be touched by Prince Andrew or a homeless guy? I think- like choose. <laughs> if you had to be, if you had to be touched. No. Yeah. You can't. You can't. You can't choose. That's that's just like no. If you had to be the, touched, no, the choice is to be touched. don't just don't be assaulted in the first place. You can't tell people to not get assaulted. That's no. very victim blaming, no, Matt. No, very no, victim no, no, blaming. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying we need to eradicate the bad people who want to abuse people. Yes. Or we can educate the victims. Look at what shoes they're wearing. Are the shoes nice? Right before you get touched. Oh my god. Right before his fingers reach your flesh. Just check out what the shoes you're wearing. Clock their shoes. Clock their shoes. Are they Air Jordans? Or are they like like flip-flops? Oh. If it's flip-flops, run. If it's Air, okay, if it's Air Jordans, run too. But like, you know, work the legal system. 
that's all I'm saying. If you want to be a pedo, be rich. Be a rich pedo. So at least the victims get something. I mean, this isn't something I want to say, but now we're on the topic of pedophilia. We should probably do our follow-up from last week. Okay, okay. This is not going to be a regular segment. I can just say that now. We've spoken about really? it. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll put my foot down. <laughs> <laughs> pedo playtime's not going to be a segment? <laughs> we're not going to have a pedo playtime. All right, this will be the next episode. We won't talk about pedophilia. I promise you that. We don't want to always revisit the same topics, you know? We have a comment here from Tracy Lang. Okay. Who says... I might be cancelled for this, but I think Nigel has a valid point about pedophilia. Oh, Amazing. This is the first time I've heard that sentence. This is the first time I've heard that <laughs> sentence in my life. And how it must be sad to live life as a pedophile. Yeah, it must be. Here's an excerpt of an article I found. Like many forms of sexual deviance, pedophilia once was thought to stem from psychological influences early in life. Mm -hmm. Now, many experts view it as a sexual orientation as immutable as heterosexuality or homosexuality. It is a deep-rooted predisposition, limited only entirely to men. That becomes clear during puberty and does not change. Wait, are there no women pedos? I mean, I thought there were. But... I've only heard of teachers who sleep with their yeah. students. And by the way, why are we stopping that? <laughs> why are we stopping that? <laughs> Do you know how cool that kid's going to be? That's how you stop bullying. If you're a teacher, you notice one of your kid, one of your students getting bullied. Sleep with them, and they'll be like, "I slept with uh, Miss Miss Mrs. Smith or whatever," <laughs> oh and they'll be the coolest kid in school. Instantly stop getting bullied. Not being bullied, but I'm now being sexually groomed by my teacher. I mean, what's worse, you know, losing your lunch money versus losing your virginity? <laughs> what's worse if you're a hot young teacher? It's the same thing again, isn't it? So if you're rich or if you're hot, it's fine. But if you're ugly and poor, stay away. Yeah, if you're ugly and poor, please don't be a <laughs> sexual offender. Please, I beg you, ugly and poor people. Please. <laughs> no, I'm saying it's a very specific circumstance. Okay. Okay, it's a lesser of two evils. If you see that your student's being bullied and you feel bad for him, a teacher stepping in to stop the bullying is only going to make the kid get bullied more. Like, oh, you need your teacher to step in for you, huh? You pussy. But if the teacher sleeps with the kid, suddenly the kid's a legend. Of oh, the teacher saying to their husbands, oh, I've got a kid that's being bullied at the moment. It's, yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah, don't worry. I know you, what you need to do. Yeah. <laughs> a loving husband will understand. <laughs> yeah. Okay. A loving husband will be like, honey, you do what you got to do. Children are the future. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I've so, got so much respect for you. <laughs> so much respect for you. They are the future. Put the dick of the future in your mouth. Oh my okay. God. And make sure the kid. Pe sometimes people get bullied. Usually it's academically gifted children who are nerdier you know, and not very athletic. They get bullied. And because they get bullied, they stop studying because they're like, oh, why, why study so hard? Why study so hard? Because I'm just going to end up getting bullied anyway. Right? And then they, they give up on their talent. And the talent never gets unearthed and never, never gets home because. They got bullied. They're so sick of studying. They just drop out of school. Therefore, if you just grope the kid in a, you know, <laughs> nicely. Nicely. Yeah. I was groped nicely. <laughs> it was a very intimate groping, oh. you know, at the school cafeteria. You have to save the future. That's what got me through high school. <laughs> No, I wasn't touched. I wasn't touched. Okay, listeners, I wasn't touched. I was. I had a very nice childhood. Okay. Anyways, what were you saying? So back to the comment. Yes. No. No. No so, women pedos. Just that's new to me. Okay. Yeah. So then we go. So that's from the quote. We now go to Tracy saying it seems relevant here to make a difference between pedophilia and sexual molestation slash grooming. Mm -hmm. So going from the immutable orientation to the actual act. Well, the latter seems clearly wrong and should be condemned in the harshest terms for the harm it causes the child. I don't see how we can fault someone for being born a certain way if they choose to refrain from acting on their desires. Well, I never thought I would hear a YouTube comment that's in support of ped pedophiles. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy about that. <laughs> yeah, I know, I can tell. <laughs> so I was thinking of just random things mm -hmm. when I was uh, on the way here, actually. Okay. And so this might come out gobbledygook. I don't know why I was thinking about it. Okay. But... I wanted to know what your take would be. So if you and your partner had fertilized eggs, right? 
Like, okay. I, yeah, I, guess it's, I mean, I don't know why it was on my mind, but yeah. it was. No, no, you, you need to make your own babies because it's just nicer to have your baby look like you, you know? I, I don't mind either way. People can do what? whatever they want to do. Why does it matter if they look like you? Because obviously people adopt kids. They don't look like them. Yeah, I, and I guarantee you they, they don't love them as much. Oh. Yeah, I guarantee you. Nobody goes for adoption as the first choice. Uh, Sorry, human beings are no. still wired to like things that look like us. Don't say that. Why? <laughs> Don't say Why? that. Why? It's a reality. They will learn, they, okay, they will learn to love you. If anything, they might love them more than a biological kid because they know how hard they've had it. How hard? Who's had it? The, like the the themselves? The kid. The kid. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, see, see? That did make me feel a bit sad. <laughs> that did make me feel Guys, a bit sad. Guys, I broke him. But I, I feel like, uh, I know, it's, 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 but certain things in life are sad. Yeah. Not everything is supposed to be happy. But I think if you can help it, you want a kid that looks like you, you know? Okay, if you adopt, adopt the same race. Oh my You know, God. I, seriously. Gemma's white, right? Yeah. Don't adopt a black kid. Well, I mean, Madonna did. Yeah, but she's Madonna. <laughs> Nobody's going to bully Madonna's kid. People are bully Matt's and Gemma's kid. Okay, a- adoption's fine. I think you, I, I, I agree. I, I changed my position. You can love them as much. It, it really did make me feel sad thinking of this little adopted children because the words come out of my mouth. The snowflakeness of me is spread to you. I've, no, got, I've got you. Because I just think that sad faces. I have, I have kid fans who listen to this and then if they're adopted, I, oh, I feel bad making them sad. I have feelings. But if you want to adopt, please adopt the correct race. So, I mean, but no, the question I was going to get okay, to. Okay, okay. Was, Sorry. Um, if you and your partner had fertilized eggs, but then five years down the line you break up, would you have a problem with your partner still going ahead and having the kid? Wait, so, so you fertilize the eggs and so, put it aside somewhere? Yeah, you can put it aside for as long as you want. Oh. And then I did, a, I did a podcast on this. So really? That's why I was thinking about it, yeah. And then they were saying how, oh, yeah, if you do it when you're in your 20s, that's the best. I mean, you can save them to whenever you want to. But I was like, but what if you break up? Like, what would happen there? Do you get to see the kid? Well, I don't know. Uh, this is it. Like, would you be happy with that? Like, having a little Nigel running around, but... Yeah, I want tons of little Nigels running around. As long as I don't have to pay alimony, <laughs> yeah. the more Nigels running around, the better. Okay? I'll fertilize all your eggs. Send your eggs in. <laughs> I'll come in a Petri dish. <laughs> and I'll mail it back to you. That's a gift you should bring to my tour. <laughs> the little Petri dish. Uncle Roger, can you come in this for me? <laughs> It's that, like another layer up from the meet and greet. It's like yeah. the special edition meet VIP and greet. VIP <laughs> meet and greet. I can, only, I can only do it once though. Per- <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could fertilize more eggs. Or you know how, okay, it's getting really dirty now, but if you watch porn and you see a threesome scene, they try to distribute the cum evenly oh at the end. Oh my God. <laughs> can I do that but with yeah. petri dishes? <laughs> you brought it up. I, I know it's gross, but I'm just saying. That I love, I love that scene. It's like equal distribution of cum. It's very, very, very oh. socialist. Porn group sex scenes in porn are very socialist. It's very like you know redistribution equally. No matter how well this woman did versus this woman, the guy is such a communist at the end. <laughs> like ah, oh, the prolet, the proletariat. Let's come on all of them evenly. It's nice, isn't it? There's no inequality when it comes to the, the ending of a porn scene. All Everybody who's, who's involved in the effort, no matter what they did, sometimes they could be just watching. One of them just watching and they, at the end, they, kneel, they all kneel in front of him. You know, I'm like, what have you done? What is your contribution to this, lady? You know, you get to be come on to, please. Why are we so egalitarian? So maybe I can do that. Yeah, but yes, I, I, I don't think I'll... I think it's okay. We can, we, I, I think I'll be okay with it. That, that's, is that, that's the answer to the question? Yeah, no, you have. Thank you. Great. Yeah, you and have. now we go to the Uncle Roger segment. Uncle Roger's story time. Okay, niece and nephew. Uncle Roger back on Nephew Nigel podcast. It been a while. It been a while. How are you doing? How are you, nephew Matt? Yeah, good. How are you, Uncle Roger? Good, good, good. Uncle Roger been on tour with Nephew Niger. It's so cool. So cool. Auntie Helen, see Uncle Roger on tour. I think she's so jealous. So jealous. Because when Auntie Helen left Uncle Roger, nobody. But suddenly my YouTube blew up. And now Auntie Helen must be kicking herself. She couldn't look at my YouTube and go, should have stuck with that guy. Should have stuck with that guy. 
behind every man is no woman. You know what they say, behind every successful man is a woman who helped her. That's so wrong. If Auntie Helen behind me, I never become successful. Nobody want Auntie Helen behind them. Hiya, she a evil bitch. Evil, so evil. Okay, you got any question for me today? What yeah. do you want to know? Well, you're saying how Auntie Helen was evil, but yeah. so who would your perfect woman be? If you, if you could have one, who would be a perfect woman? Easy. Perfect woman is Auntie Esther. Fuyo. <laughs> no, just kidding, just kidding. Uncle Roger feel very creepy because I keep bringing up Auntie Esther in every video. <laughs> <laughs> I think Auntie Esther going to feel so creeped out. She's going to watch my video and going, Hi, yeah, I, you just review one of my video. Now you talk about me every episode. Are you love bombing her? Love bombing? What is that? What it's is when that? you flood somebody with compliments at the start of a relationship. Oh, is that a thing? Yeah. So oh. you do that to like kind of mask if you're a horrible person. Why just... is that bad? Compliment good? What wrong with giving people compliment? Well, it's, no, because they do that and they, they will like shower them with gifts and things at the start to kind of lock them in. And then they'll turn out to be like uh, not very nice. That what everybody do, hi yeah. <laughs> you see any relationship at first always got gift, but they get married twenty years later, no gift. They don't even remember their birthday or anniversary. So Uncle Roger think love bombing is correct way to get girlfriend. <laughs> everybody should love bomb. Love bomb is nice because if you love bomb, that means that at least one period of your relationship where you get affection. As opposed to no affection at all. Uncle Roger gonna love bomb the next auntie. <laughs> I'm gonna love bomb her, feed her egg fried rice every day. Nothing wrong with love bombing. Hiya. What the issue with love bombing? Oh, just that it's deceitful because you go in at the start doing all this with no intention to keep doing it in the relationship. Listen, niece and nephew. Dating is like job interview. You always have to lie to get the job. <laughs> Correct? So you see woman, you see man, you go on date. Hide your crazy. Don't show them you're crazy on first date. Show them you're crazy on the fifth year. Hide your crazy for five years. Then they stuck with you. And by the time too late, got house, got two kids, they can't leave. That's how you have happy marriage. <laughs> you hide your crazy. Remember that niece and nephew. Hide your crazy. And my perfect woman. Perfect woman. There's no such thing as perfect woman. Every woman have flaw. Every person have flaw. Every guy or woman have flaw. So perfect woman, it's all about working to get the compatibility. Because sometimes they look perfect, but they can't cook. Hi, yeah, so not perfect. You know? Or they everything perfect. They can cook, they can clean, they smart, they funny, but they vegan. Hi yeah. <laughs> Some people have depression, have anxiety, have veganism. It's too much. It's too much. They all need therapy. So perfect woman for Uncle Roger. Someone who can cook. Someone funny. And someone who likes Uncle Roger's sense of humor. I just want to laugh together with the woman. And someone who love bomb Uncle Roger. I want someone to love bomb me. Just throw all your love. Bomb me with your love. Buy me flour. Buy me wok. Buy me egg fried rice. Everything. But hide your crazy. And Uncle Roger hide my crazy also. Let your crazy show in bed. In bed, go as crazy as you want. Do some choking, do some spitting. Sorry, children. Do everything. Nobody care. That your outlet for your crazy. Uncle Roger think love bombing, okay. Gaslighting in moderate amount, that okay also. What would the Uncle Roger love bomb look like? What would you do? Oh, if Uncle Roger love bomb someone, I cook them food every day. I go to Chinese grocery store far away from my house in London. I go there, I buy Asian food for them. If they don't like Asian food, I don't care. I force feed them <laughs> galang gao. Got the, you need to train them. Hopefully Uncle Roger, next auntie, like Asian food also. But if they don't, I love bomb them with Asian food. Train them until they can eat. Force feed them, tie them up to radiator. Starve them a bit. And then... Few months later, fui yo, they like Asian food now because they that all they can eat. Like I said, nobody perfect. If you find someone everything perfect, but they don't like Asian food, what can you do? Not date them? No. You find someone perfect but don't like Asian food, you change them. That's how every good relationship starts. You see someone and then you think I can change that person. <laughs> Correct? 
and then you start dating them and you slowly change them for the better. Slowly, they get away from their old group of friends and then they stranded on an island with you. That's what you need to do to keep a woman. Trust me, Uncle Roger with Auntie Helen, I so accepting of all her friends. I always let her, let her hang out with her friend, let her do her own thing and see what happens. She leave me, hi yeah. So now if I date a new auntie, I gonna slowly pull her away from all her social group, her family, her friend. So she stuck with me forever. So your three step plan is essentially love bomb, gaslight, Stockholm syndrome. Correct. <laughs> what wrong with that? That sounds like a perfect love story. Perfect <laughs> love story. People gonna write song and poetry about it. Just kidding. Don't do that, niece and nephew. It's not nice. You meet someone, you just ask them out. Ask them out. Uncle Roger, perfect woman. Probably, probably like food. Because all Uncle Roger like is food. When I say food, I mean like f you eating, not like feet. Uncle Roger have food fetish. Food fetish also. <laughs> I like sucking the big toe. Sucking big toe on a hot woman. The most delicious thing, but again, hide your crazy. That is <laughs> at least fifth date conversation. Don't bring that up on first date. You're gonna scare them away. Imagine showing on first date, hi, how you doing? How your big toe, what it tastes? <laughs> she gonna leave after one drink. The trick to having good first date, you get to the restaurant, order one bottle. So you get the woman stuck there for one bottle of wine. Oh my God. <laughs> Little tip for this and nephew. If you just get your own glass of beer, she get a beer, you get a beer, you both finish beer, you leave. Too fast? You need to trap them. Get some wine. <laughs> get some wine, get a bottle. Get a nice bottle of wine. Dating tip for niece and nephew. Hope it's useful. Bye-bye. All right, I'm back. And I heard Uncle Roger gave some good dating advice about love bombing. And I, I have to say, I'm on Uncle Roger's side. Love bombing is good if you know you're being love bombed. Okay? You have to be careful. You have to recognize I'm being love bombed right now. <laughs> but let me enjoy it. Don't get trapped by the love bomb. But sometimes it's not love bombing, though. Sometimes what happened to, like, the fire, you know, in the beginning? Sometimes you're so passionate. And sometimes if it looks like love bombing, but it's not. So you need to recognize that sometimes they actually do feel that, that fiery passion. Oh, I just can't stop thinking about you, honey. Maybe I'm just saying that because secretly I want that kind of love, you know? That fiery yeah. love that fades out after five, eight years. <laughs> you know? That's, that's the only love I've experienced. Okay? So we have some listener emails I'd like to go through. There's a special mention because one person just wrote in saying, can you also send me a video of an Asian squat? And I was like, that's... Yeah, that's, that. that's that's a thing. Just <laughs> Google it, dude. This is a podcast. This is this is not your personal assistant. I'm not a personal assistant. We ha so our main listener email is from Hiroki. Can you just check? This is how you say it. Yeah, that's fine. I don't yeah. know why white people get so worried. I do. I do. We're not gonna call you racist because you pronounce something wrong. I don't even know how to pronounce your last name. There's too many. Like there's a dash in it. <laughs> Matt Bentley Viney. Yeah. You got oh, it. okay, okay. A lot of people say Vinny, it's annoying. Vinny. So well done, that's okay. good. I don't care if you get my name wrong, you know? I feel bad because I did used to get your name wrong. That's fine, I don't care. <laughs> Do you actually not care? No. I used to be like, oh, you, you, you didn't grow in my country, you know? Like, yeah. who, like you have some understanding. But it's, it's also partially my fault. There are no vowels in there. So it's, you can't really just blame yourself. <laughs> it's my fault too. You should come up with that. It's like, like why do we need to care about minorities' name so much? Okay, why? We're in England, use English. Oh, no. Okay. If I go to China, they, I don't have a Chinese name. I don't mind if they get my name wrong. All right, probably a bad look if you come out and say that. Don't, that don't sounds do that. so nationalist. So yeah. Not <laughs> I think nationalism is a bit out of, out of fashion these days. But I feel like everybody needs a little bit of it. No? You don't think so? No, I don't. I think there are certain things that are... It's good that it's a melting pot. It's good that everyone's different. I, I, you should celebrate people being different. It's good. But also, there's good things in preserving the country identity. Do you want Sweden to feel like America? No, you want America to feel like America. You want Sweden to feel like Sweden. But that I'm not saying no immigrants. <laughs> That's different. I'm saying that every country has a distinct feel to it. If you go traveling in Norway, you don't want to feel like you're in Thailand. And again, I don't know where the line is. I'm just playing a little bit of devil's advocate, but it's something I believe in. I just, it's something I believe, but not that strongly. So you don't believe there should be Chinatown, for example, then? 
I don't know. I see, I see what you're doing. You're poking holes in the argument, right? But when you travel, when you go to Greece, you want it to feel different from when you go to France. Yep. Right? Agree. Yep. I'm just saying that's something people don't talk about. Yeah. I, I'm all for melting pot. This is interesting, actually. I think it could be a... a, a, a because it's such an uncommon stance to take. And I'm, I'm, all f- I'm an immigrant myself, so I'm all for migration and stuff. Uh, but wh- where's the where's the balancing point? Yeah, you, you know? can raise this question. I can't raise that yeah, question. Yeah, I look yeah. like a, a dickhead if I say Asian that. privilege. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because because usually when white people raise that question, it, it's pr- preceded with like yeah. calling people like uh, racial slurs. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. But when I raise a question, it's just raising the question. Yeah, you know, I'm not trying to send people back to their own country. You're just throwing a grenade and then yeah. watching the hell. See ya. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> So we have this email that says, hello, I am applying to be Nigel's food slave. I knew instantly yes. when the title was food slave, I was like, oh no, here we go. What's Hiroki, this you're always welcome to be my food slave, baby. I made food consistently for my family during the last five months that I was in Papua New Guinea, but I don't oh. live there anymore. I like coconut oil, galangal, fish sauce and lemongrass. I wasn't sure if applicants for the food slave position were meant to send nudes or not. So I went halfway. Yeah, they sent a photo of themselves and it was, yeah, they sent Show a photo. It. <laughs> Show it. And it was basically, oh, well, Why did you not forward me nudes? I've explicitly <laughs> told you, Matt, if I get nudes, it's a forward to me. It was like me. a bit of a six pack and stuff like that. So yeah, it was like a half nude. Oh, nice. Oh, it's a guy. Oh, okay. Infinitely less interested. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, Hiroki. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bad lighting, bro. You need to invest in better lighting. Okay. Yeah, so I've, Got to see that. Thanks, Thank thanks you. for sending. Thank you for your service, Matt. And then, <laughs> some questions I have about the position are: Okay, how much do I get paid? Is my housing provided for? Do I get to eat any of the food Nigel makes? If Nigel goes on a date, can I join in on the fun after I finish my work? No. <laughs> what? I'm having a food slave, not a threesome partner. <laughs> It's crazy. How many how many benefits do you want? You want a place to stay, and you want to you want to fuck with the people I fuck. Casual sex. <laughs> yeah, that's not a that's a great benefit to have on an employment like a like a job letter. You know, health insurance, <laughs> access to gym and pussy. You know. <laughs> no, I'll give you a place to stay. That's fine. I'll pay you. I mean, if you get a place to stay, then I can't pay you that much. I mean, surely they're getting paid in sex, if that's a thing. Paid in sex? Because no, no, like the access to the women that you're sleeping no, with. No, no, I'm not giving them access to women. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I know I talk about p- pedophilia and, s- uh, and sex a lot and choking people a lot on the pod, but I'm not going to pay. I don't treat people <laughs> like that, Matt. Okay, yeah, I'll pay them a fair wage. They're kind of implying it. They're implying it, aren't they? Saying, can I join in on the fun after? Because they know the, maybe you're accessing women they don't have access to. Do you know what I mean? Because well, of your Z celebrity. A, I'm not a pimp. I'm not pimping <laughs> out my women for you. No, but it's not pimping out because it's not just that. He's just saying like a threesome. So it's just they get to come in for a bit, have a go, and then go back to work. No! <laughs> I don't have a threesome with my food slave. You know your place. Thank you for considering me for the position, and I'll be on the lookout for the acceptance email, along with answers to my questions. Uh, the answers to, to uh, your questions is no to everything. <laughs> yeah. But thank you for your interest, Hiroki. And then, um, so we have a very short podcast review this time, but it's a nice one, short but sweet. Okay. This is from Chand and the Chef, and the title is In My Top Three Podcasts to Listen To. Yes. I'm sad it's not just top. Why do they say top three? Why are the other two? Yeah. Chandan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, five stars. Thank you. That's lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Your podcasts always give me something wholesome to listen to whilst doing uni assignments. Sounds like you need a personal grocer. Brackets, food slave. I think that's yes. really hit a note with people, actually. There's a lot about food slave. Going. Yeah. People, we need, we all need slaves in our lives to make our lives easier. You know what I mean? In the old days, and oh, again. No, let's not go no, to no, the no, old no, no, days. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going where you think I'm going. In the old days, the wife was the food slave, right? This was before women entered the workforce. Yep. Okay. okay? And then, and then things, things were what they are. And I think it's good that women can work now. But then that, that food slave position is now vacant. 
Nobody does this anymore. That's true. Right? So what, what's the solution here? We need to get like, we need to go back to the old days. And this is from uh, the Apple Store UK. Oh. Podcast UK. Okay. Yeah, I'm keeping it. Ho- well, fuck, no, don't worry. I'm going to Yeah, that. keeping I'm- it nationalistic. <laughs> it's a British podcast. We only read the British store reviews. Okay, British podcast for British people. <laughs> I realized as I was saying it, I'm like, oh no, I'm Nigel Farage. I think you have a little bit of that in you. I don't, I don't. Melting pot. That's what I keep saying. I love that. My favorite thing. I phrase. think my favorite thing would be melting pot, but each country still has an identity. Yeah. You no, don't no, want no, Britain no, to I feel like agree. America, you know? No, I agree. You yeah, that would be a tra- that would be a fucking tragedy if Britain sort of feel like <laughs> Yeah, I think there's a balance to be struck there, but no, Obviously, in this climate, nobody's going to argue for the other side. No. Yeah, so I have to do the job for white people, you know? Yeah, I would rather you do it than Katie Hopkins or something. That is true. 100%. That is true, yeah. Sometimes when people say, oh, I hate tourists, isn't that part of, like, asserting your national identity, you know? Yeah. But we, we, it's okay to say we hate tourists because tourists isn't, like, a protected group. It's not a race. It's not a religion, Right. So I think everybody secretly has a little bit of nationalistic instinct in them. Embrace it, white people. Maybe when we say we want to retain a country's identity, it's not a race. It's not a religion. It's not a particular type of people. It's a feeling. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah it's a yeah, feeling. That's very poetic. Thank yeah, you. Is, we yeah. got somewhere. Started racist and the poetic. <laughs>